Thank you for those numbers. So when we were asked to prepare for this evening, we actually did not really talk, which is kind of interesting. Um, it was something that, you know, I, I was tempted to reach out and before I prepared, but we didn't actually do that. So, um, but it is an instrumental weekend and it, it would make sense, I guess, for the Lord to inspire us um, to look at one of the, you know, greatest musicians uh, in the history of the church, and that would be David. So. Um, I was inspired to look at Psalm 23. So Psalm 23, uh, verses 1 to 3, very familiar. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. When you read these verses, what comes to mind? If you're like me, you think of um, rolling metals, endless, green, something like in New Zealand or maybe in the Midwest somewhere, um, blue skies, maybe a little brook kind of rolling by. Um, it seems like heaven, it seems peaceful. Um, yet in Israel, there isn't really landscape quite like that. Um, it's actually rather stony, there's brown hills, um, and there's small pools of water in the valley. It isn't this comfortable place, and yet it's called Green Pastures. Um, green Pastures is located in the wilderness, so kind of outside of civilization. Um, in the Hebrew tongue, the wilderness is called Midbar, and this area, um, it's really kind of desolate and dry, especially from further back as you kind of look at it. And it's strange because you see these uh, shepherd and these sheep kind of grazing across the hillside. And as you look at it, um, the first thing you think is, well, what are they eating? They must be going somewhere, right? They're probably just passing through. They've got to get through this hillside. Well, no, that is green pastures. That's, that's the location. Um, so uh, as you start to you know, come closer, you notice that there's piles of rocks. And coming out of the sides of the rocks, there are shoots of grass and um, you kind of look at that and you start to see okay so there is some vegetation here these these sheep are eating something um, but it's not endless and it's not uh, close together and it's certainly not convenient and the way that this grass grows is uh, whether in the rainy season uh, it will grow from the rain but uh, the rest of the year round it actually has to come the moisture has to come from the coast from the Mediterranean as it blows in with the wind so there is not a lot growing there um, and yet so this place is nothing like what we, what I would picture and and, and uh, what many of you probably picture green pastures described in scripture yet who wrote these words this was David and what did David do before he became a king and you know conquered Goliath, he was a shepherd boy. So he was familiar with this area. He was familiar with the way that the sheep would eat. He was familiar with the process of feeding them. And he knew that in order to feed these sheep, he had to lead them out onto this hillside and they would eat what little bits of grass there were. And it meant lots of time on your feet. And it meant that the sheep were not necessarily um, going to be fed in a very quick manner. So where am I going with this? Um, I would like to consider our experience with the Lord. And, and I, I do believe that um, this is our experience. Psalm 23 is what we experience. See, if the pastures were lush and expansive like in, like I said, New Zealand or somewhere in the Midwest, somewhere like that, the sheep wouldn't have to go far to eat food. And that's why I'd you know, cattle often gets put inside a fenced area and there's plenty of food and they don't move anywhere. They want to eat a bite, they have a little bit here, they have a little bit there, they lay down, they take a nap, they wake back up, they eat that food again and it's kind of just this process of, uh, of being fed. But our Christian experience isn't like that. And neither was the experience for the sheep. See, the sheep had to depend on the shepherd for the meal. The sheep had to follow the shepherd to the next area the next tuft of grass. If they needed a drink, the sheep had to follow the shepherd to where to get water, and so on and so forth. And, and for us as Christians, King David was reminding us that this is 
a model of what our relationship is supposed to be like with God. When we, Jesus even uh, warned us that, uh, that if he that taketh not his cross and followeth not after me is not worthy of me, he that findeth, findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loses his life for my sake shall find it. See, when we lose our life, we forfeit our control. When we take up our cross, we accept the trials that come with walking with Christ. We have to give over that desire to be in the driver's seat. We have to let Christ lead us. See, sadly, in our North American culture of plenty, verses like this um, are not even really that relatable. We, we, aren't really, we can't really relate with these sheep in the sense of having scarcity of food or lack of available resources or so on and so forth. And yet, God still challenges us to walk with him. So I think tonight, for myself first and for all of us, you know, we really have to take inventory of where we're at in our current walk with the Lord. Are we truly walking beside him? Because if we can't walk with God on that mountainside where there is some food, then when we are in the valley, when we're in difficult times, we can't expect him to be there with us. We have went on our own way. And the verse in Psalm 23 doesn't end at verse 3 where I ended. There's a promise there. And we can cling to that promise if we are truly walking with the Lord, and, and, and the promise finishes like this. We can say when we're in that valley, when we're in that place or time in our life when, we're at, when we feel empty or we feel lost or we feel unable to lead, we can say, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever.